We're calming down from an extended patch of fast solar wind that has kept us at unsettled conditions for over a week. And we've got some new active regions that have rotated into Earth view that should brighten your day. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is finally beginning to calm down. We've been experiencing some moderately fast wind from an extended but patchy coronal hole, and that has brought us some gorgeous aurora at high latitudes while it's kept us at unsettled conditions for over a week. As a matter of fact, we actually bumped up to active conditions for a short while, but it didn't last long enough to get us any real decent aurora down at mid latitudes. Nonetheless, the shows are beginning to wane a little bit as the solar wind speed begins to slow down. Now the one thing is that we do actually have another weak coronal hole that is rotated into Earth view. It itself is also kind of collapsing and it'll bring us some patchy fast wind. Probably not anything like the show that we just saw, but that would rotate into the Earth strike zone in about seven days or so. So we could get a little bit more shows at high latitudes before all of this is over. But the big story are the three bright regions that have rotated into Earth view. As a matter of fact, one of them actually emerged on the Earth-facing disk, and this region will likely get a number, uh, region 2730, if it continues to grow like this. So these regions are good news for amateur radio and shortwave radio responders. We have now boosted the solar flux back up into the 70s. This means marginal radio propagation again for everyone, and these conditions could easily last over the next week. Switching to your M flare threat meter, you can see the X ray flux continues to be extremely low, and therefore, by proxy, the solar flux is low. Now, back around December 5th, we started to see that X ray flux rise just a little bit. This was due to active region 2729 emerging out of the sun's surface, and it's kept the X ray flux a little bit elevated. You can even see a few uh, solar flares being popped, they're real tiny ones. But it kept the solar flux elevated until it started rotating out of Earth view back around the 9th and the 10th. Now the only thing that's kept that X-ray flux from tanking and therefore the solar flux from completely tanking are the new three regions that are now in Earth view and one of them, region 2730, I think it's going to be numbered. If it continues to grow, we will be watching it for like mild flare activity, but don't worry, it's no threat for radio blackouts, but it will keep the uh, solar flux boosted back into the 70s, hopefully for the next week. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually were really quiet was clear back at the end of November. Since then, we've had several coronal holes are kind of patchy and extended that have brought us up to unsettled conditions. You can see the first one ramped up at the first week of, of December, and it even bumped us up to active conditions for a short while, or right around December 3rd. Then that one kind of calmed down a little bit, and we got hit again by a second patchy kind of extended coronal hole that brought us some more moderately fast solar wind and that ramped us back up to unsettled conditions around the 7th and even bumped us up to active conditions around the end of the 9th. And then since then we're still kind of sitting at unsettled conditions but we're ramping back down again and we should go finally back to quiet conditions here nearing the end of the week. And during these periods of fast solar wind where we were seeing unsettled conditions for over a week, it gave us some gorgeous aurora views at high latitudes over many parts of the world, like these in Sweden. It was seen in multiple places in Sweden and multiple places in Norway. It was seen in Scotland and in the UK. It lit the skies in Iceland some devastatingly gorgeous shots in Iceland. And as we go over the pond, it was seen in many places in Canada, including multiple views in Manitoba. And it was seen all over Alberta. And it was even seen on a flight from Toronto to Paris. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what's going on? Well, <laughs> not much. We've got a lone active region on the sun's backside right now, and that's what it is during solar minimum. There's just not a lot to report. The nice news is that as this region begins to rotate to the west limb in Stereo's view, you do see the new active regions emerging on that, that side of the disk. That's actually already in Earth view. So those are the active regions that are brightening our day uh, in Earth's view and boosting that radio propagation. And what's nice is that that will easily continue for the next week and possibly two weeks if the, those regions continue to grow. But after that, there's not much going on. So enjoy these two weeks because we could drop off to absolutely nothing. Now you Aurora photographers, you're also going to be dealing with kind of a bland uh, landscape here for the next couple weeks because there's not much in the way of coronal holes either and the sun just isn't launching any solar storms. So we could easily go back to quiet conditions over the next two weeks after we get through this one last burst of fast wind and, you know, enjoy the quiet time. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we're still experiencing the waning fast solar wind from this extended coronal hole. And so we are going to continue to expect unsettled conditions. And as a matter of fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with about a 25% chance of a minor storm. Now, at mid latitudes, we're expecting normal to unsettled conditions with about a 15 to 20% chance of a, uh, active conditions. And and this will continue easily over the next few days and possibly into close to the end of the week before things really begin to quiet down. And then in about a week's time, we are going to expect to see another short burst of fast wind from yet another kind of patchy coronal hole, but it could bring us some more aurora chances, especially at high latitudes. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. Now we do have a few active regions on the earth facing disk right now, but they are not flare producers. So you GPS users, you should be very happy on earth's day side reception should be wonderful. Now because of these regions though, we do have a boosted solar flux. So amateur and shortwave radio and emergency responders, you should be very happy. We're back into the 70s for solar flux, which means you have marginal radio propagation again. And these conditions could easily continue over this entire week, possibly even longer, if these regions continue to stay active. Now, also because we are in solar minimum, the cosmic ray penetration is a bit more than we normally would have it. So you frequent flyers, and this includes air crew who fly more than 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are still at a moderate risk for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is finally beginning to calm down. We've been sitting at essentially unsettled conditions since the beginning of December. And this has been due to some moderately fast wind from several coronal holes that have been rotating through the Earth's strike zone. But finally, things are slowing down and slowing down. We've got a little bit of activity still left, probably going to hit us around the weekend, maybe into early next week. But that should get us back to unsettled conditions only for high latitudes could bring us a little bit more aurora show and then things will really quiet down and that may last for the next couple weeks so aurora photographers it looks like you're finally going to get a little bit of a respite now the other story is we have three active regions on the earth facing disc right now and it has they have bumped up the solar flux back into the 70s. So this means amateur and shortwave operators, as well as your emergency responders. Hey, the radio propagation is back up to the marginal range, and you should be able to enjoy that here over the next week and possibly over the next two weeks before things begin to settle back down. Now, also, we have you GPS uh, users. Your reception on Earth's day side right now should look pretty good, but as these storms begin to quiet down and space weather gets quiet again, well, on Earth's night side, you might have a little trouble at low latitudes. So as long as you stay clear of the dawn dust terminators, your reception should stay pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.